DMC DM2. Or if you're coming from Quake, DM2 Claustrophobia Polius. I always I used to call it claustrophobiosis because I'm a freaking idiot. Um by American McGee was the designer of the original map. Uh, you know, if you thought it was pointless me talking about the Castle of the Dam because everyone's talked about it, and talking about any of the deathmatch maps in Quake, the the original there were six deathmatch maps in Quake that were obviously goes without saying exclusively for multiplayer mode. DMs one through to one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and to DM two, a uh, claustrophobia polis is one of the most famous from that game. Definitely like one of the most played like multiplayer maps of all time. At least when it comes to like you know the old school deathmatch games. Um, you know I'm gonna talk about it anyway. I've never been too fond of it. I, I I quite like it. You know I have a lot of fun playing on it. Uh, but compared to some of the other more like famous maps in this game, like you know the dark place or I forget what exactly what's called DM six. And, you know, especially DM3, um, I'm, I'm more partial to those and even some of the single player maps that I can't think off the top of my head. But it goes without saying, you're going to have a hell of a lot of fucking fun playing this map anyway. So let's start in the middle here. Now, I do like the aesthetic, again, it's a, the, the stylistically, it is different from the first game. It goes with a slightly more original Quake game, sorry. It goes for a slightly more stylistic, futuristic look. And it looks good, you know, technically... Gotta say, though, without the, like, the crucifix bleeding cut open Jesus hanging here, it's just not quite the same. So, one of the most infamous things about this map is this first little area here. This is like a trap room, alright? So, if you go to either side, I'm not gonna necessarily show them off. Uh, I think they both got armor anyway. If you were to press this switch, you get locked in here for a bit. Or not really, you can walk out. And you open up this, uh, pit here, obviously. And if you fall in there, you know, that's, that's not a good thing. You can spawn right above that, too. Now, you might think, oh yeah, just hang out there and like, you know, be an asshole the whole time. And I'll show off the other side too. You can't quite do that because of something I'm going to show here. Yeah, see? Identical. Because on this side is this. You have a switch there that could like, you know, presses in the wall here to crush who's ever in there. And same with this side for the other side. So, you know, there's a counter for that. So don't worry too much about it if like someone's being an asshole. So anyway, uh, let's go this way. Uh, no, let's go this way. I changed my mind. So, you, you got this little thing here, which is pretty easy to fuck up and die. Um, by the way, it's funny. I mentioned that, you know, they use a lot of... They use the Team Fortress Classic videos in the E1M2 video. But you heard the burning sound there. That's actually the original voice clip from, like, you know, Quake. In fact, there's certain sound effects like the teleport sound, which is also in Mario 64. But that, I'm not the first one to bring that up that they're using. So, that's funny. Usually it's pretty easy to jump around across that. You just got to be really careful. But don't try walking across this not recommended too much. Because, you know, especially in the heat of the moment, you're going to fall down. So this room's important because it's got a rocket launcher. And in Quake Deathmatch, having a rocket launcher is like uncovering the birth of Christ himself. Uh, we're going to go this way real quick, though. Because first I want to talk about this little stairway. And take advantage of the, the fact that you can see through here. You know, I feel some people are too busy focusing on, like, what I'm navigating that they're not going to, like, check out. Hey, I can shoot through and take people out there. If you want to take this bridge across, you got to press this switch here um, and grab the shotgun while you're at it. But as saw one of the bots actually already did for me. If you press that switch there, it extends out this bridge here. I mean, you could actually jump from here and make it, or you can even rocket jump across, but, you know, there's options. And if the bridge is gone, you can press that switch to get back out. So that's really cool. And I'll show you some of the other stuff that's over there. All right. Coming back this way. If you come up this way. Um, and get the red armor. Always go for the red armor. Red armor is stupid important. You can also be shooting at people that have like another quick way to get back down if you want. Uh, but if you take the teleport here, you get sent to this room. Like I said, watch out. Watch out. Because, you know, the, the player that activated it isn't going to get a frag. But they are going to take away one of your kills. You're going to lose a frag for that. And that's no good. No one likes that. Not at all. So we're actually going to go this way. We're on the other side of the map now. That's where we entered in beforehand. We're going to wrap around. Um, there actually is a way to get up here. I'll, I think I'll show it in a bit. Uh, keep in mind, if you have a rocket launcher, you can rocket up, jump up there for some goodies. You're going to spawn here a lot. Uh, make sure you grab the ammo here because, you know, there's nail guns out here. And, you know, you want a lot of ammo for the nail gun, especially because there's no super nail gun here. This map is uh, somewhat notable for the fact that it doesn't actually have a lot of weapons on it. Including the lightning gun, which is the most, like, the strongest weapon. Uh, or one of the strongest weapons in Quake, aside from the rocket launcher. E1M2, Castle of the Dam, didn't have it because in actual Episode 1 Quake, remember, Episode 1 of Quake was part of the shareware release. Because Quake was one of the last major games to have a shareware release 
where the first episode's free and then the remaining episodes you had to buy. Um, every weapon but the lightning gun was in episode one, so that's why that didn't spawn there, and they're keeping it accurate. Um, but even, you could, you didn't get the deathmatch maps in the shareware version, you had to buy the game. So, even that, regarding that though, there's still no lightning gun here, which is interesting. So this is map, part of the reason this map's sort of favored by some people is that it's really rocket launcher heavy. Though some people also don't like it because it's kind of slower. We'll go that way in a second. Let me talk about this little area here first. Because this brings us back up to that rocket launcher area. I always like this part. This part looks really awesome. I mean, like Regardless of what game you're playing. Don't fall in. If you probably want to get into the uh, teleporter here, you got to press the switch. You do that, you come through here. And you got a couple options. The most immediate one that it throws at you, obviously, is to get the grenade launcher. Which, you know, it's fine. You might as well grab that. It, you know, or you can grab it. It's not going to necessarily be a bad deal. And you can obviously be a real massive asshole and just spam grenades from up here. You can also jump over there, but I don't know if you could do that in original Quake. But the better option, especially if you didn't have the rocket launcher, is to come this way. Because not only can you get a rocket launcher from here, but you can take this part here and get the fucking quad damage. And, you know, that's always a fun time guaranteed for all. Um, if, you had, did have, if you had the rocket launcher... You can always get up there too, but once you have the quad damage, I don't recommend rocket jumping. I don't really think I need to tell you that though. So if you come this way, you're going to see here, there's this. And if you shoot that, there's a little area here and you can come in here to get a red armor. And shortly thereafter, this opens up so you can get out. Or I think you might be able to rocket jump out if you want. I'm not too sure. The elevator usually works better, but uh, Parabot isn't playing nice right now. Um, yeah, and th that's it. That's the map. Um... Really famous. Um, again, not like I said, not quite my favorite, but it is a hell of a lot of fun. So, you know, if you're playing Quake, there's a good chance you probably played it. If you're playing Deathmatch Classic, there's probably a very good chance you played it. If you played any other game, like maybe even Quake 3, there's a good chance you played it because someone's probably ported it over there. I know it's in Quake 3. I played it in Quake 3. I don't know what I'm talking about. By the way, with any explosive switches that you have to shoot to activate, don't ever shoot and try to use rockets. It just doesn't work. It was like that in Quake as well, and it carries over to here, so, you know. You know, that's just, you know, so a mistake I always made as a freaking, like, you know, lad. Yeah, turn around, turn around. Don't be tempted by the grenade launcher. Now, when you got the quad, you know the quad damage is activated. If the quad damage isn't active, it hasn't respawned, um, maybe, maybe go for the grenade launcher, but you always, always want to go for the rocket, like quad damage and the rocket launcher. Just make sure you're not too close because, again, that's going to be a bad time for you. Like that! I don't usually bother with the traps. I just like grabbing the armor, honestly. Pro tip, if you want to get up there a little faster, too, you can always do that. You got options. That's the good thing about Quake. It's a mega armor, too. I, I don't know why I always neglect to mention that. Also, on the uh, it's a mega armor on the one part of the bridge there. I just picked up. Also, too, it's oh, there's a mega armor or mega health. I keep saying. A mega health over it fills your health to 200, but then it slowly starts whittling down. I always forget about it. Um... On the bridge area there with the red armor is you can get a mega R health there. And then where the grenade launcher is, is also a mega health. Forgot about that, sorry. I gotta say though, the jibbing in this game, in Deathmatch Classic here, isn't nearly as satisfying as it was in Quake. And I don't even think it's as satisfying as it is in Half-Life. That's a real goddamn shame. I don't know what they did. It's not that they didn't try, because the actual, like, you know, explosions have more effort. Like, you have, like, the body parts and stuff. Seem to have more, like, you know, a bit more realistic and, like, you know, higher fidelity. But they're just not as bright. It's not the bright red that was there in Quake, nor does it have the blip, blip or, like, the ah, ah, ah sound. You know, the jib sound from Quake, you know? I mean, I would have taken that and combined it with the jib sound from Half Life, like stock Half Life, because that's still, like, the most satisfying jib sound of all time. That's what I would have done. Oh, 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 wow, Jimmy Jillikers, that was close. Yeah, a pro tip, pro strats. Oh, oh, that was sick, pretty wizard jump, bruh. Let's do it, baby. Oh, here we go, I love it. Rampage! 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 Oh, rampage! Rampage! Pulge! Pulge like Dr. Ram! You have a rampage in your dodge ram. Oh, so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh my goodness! Someone touch my nipples and make me lactate. 